Most essential learning competences are explain the postulates of the cell theory, describe the structure and function of major and subcellular organelles, distinguish prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells according to their distinguishing features. Learning objectives describe cell and cell theory, explain the postulates of the development of cell theory, identify and describe the structure and functions of cell organelles, differentiate prokaryotic from eukaryotic cells, and understand the importance of cells for living organisms. about the video. How will you describe the video presented? That is correct. It's all about cells. Having known, cells are basic building blocks of all living things. And based on the video, the human body is composed of three million of cells. They provide structure for the body, they gain nutrients from food, convert those nutrients into energy, and carry out these specialized functions. And this is why cell is important. So let us explore cells by starting to identify the foundations of the development of cell theory. Lesson 1, Cells, the Living Blocks of Life In our class, more than 300 years ago, no knowledge existed about the fundamental unit of living things, the invention of the microscope, and the results of the observational studies that finally resulted in exceed amount of information that proved that all living things are made up of millions of tiny fundamental units that are vital to life itself. All living organisms on the planet are made up of tiny individual units. Without these units, the living organisms cannot function the way they do now. These individual building blocks of every living organism are known as cells. Okay, class, let us recall all about cells. Their basic characteristics. Just as plants and animals are alive, of course, so do our cells. Life, in fact, is the most basic property of cells. And cells, having known the smallest units, exhibit this kind of property. One, cells are highly complex and organized. 
Each type of cell has a consistent appearance in wood under a high-powered electron microscope. That is, its organs have a particular shape and location from one individual of species to another. Two, all cells store their hereditary informations. All living cells to the Earth, without any known exceptions, store their hereditary information in the form of DNA. Three, cells are capable of producing more of themselves. This is just like an individual organisms are deleted by reproductions, so too are individual cells. Four, cells acquire and utilize energy. All organisms require energy input to maintain the process of life. Five, cells carry out a variety of chemical reactions. This means that all those or all those chemical changes take place in cells in the presence of enzymes. Six, cells engage in mechanical activities. Cells are sites of full of activity. Materials are transported from place to place. Molecules and structures are assembled and then rapidly disassembled. And in many cases, the entire cell moves itself from one side to another. Seven, cells are able to respond to stimuli. Organisms constantly sense changes in the surroundings and make controlled response to those changes. Eight, cells are capable of self-regulations. Cells are strong and healthy because they are protected from dangerous fluctuations in composition and behavior. But in any case of any fluctuation, the feedback mechanisms are activated that help the cell to return to the appropriate state. Cells evolve. Evolution is not simply an event of the past, but an ongoing process that continues to modify the properties of cells that will be present in organisms that have yet to appear. So now class, we can think about cells as the basis of life, which make all biological processes possible. It is difficult for us to imagine the possibility of any life at all without cells. So in this lesson, we will explore the aspects and parts of cell theory, its revolved history, and many versions as well as the extension to this theory. The cell theory is scientifically and universally accepted theory that was formulated and proposed in the mid-17th century. And this is one of the most fundamental principles of biology. 1. Robert Hooke Hooke termed the word cell for describing biological organisms because he said they resemble monks. 2. Anthony Van Leeuwenhoek is commonly known as the father of microbiology as he was the first person to ever see microorganisms. He later improved and updated Zacharias Janssen's microscope and produced his lens and thus contributed towards the establishment of microbiology. 3. Marcelo Maltini and Mihem Negru. They conducted a separated investigations on plant cells. They determined the presence of organelles within cell cells. Stimulated by Hooke's researches, Marcelo Maltini and Mihem Negru laid a substantial foundation for the plant anatomy. 4. Robert Brown. He was known for discovering the cell nucleus and gave one of the earliest detailed descriptions of the cell nucleus. Thus, became a major breakthrough in the history of biology. 5. Matthias Schleiden The cell theory as we know it today was formulated in the years 1838 and 1839 and the German scientist Schleiden studied plant cells and postulated that every living thing is made of cells or the product of cells. He also proposed that new cells arise from a crystallization method, from old cells or from elsewhere. The following year, in 1839, Hedor Schwann put forward his proposal with regards to animal cells, postulating that every element in animals is made up of cells or their products. This put an end to the debates whether or not plants and animals are different in structural origin and composition. 7. Albrecht von Bulleiter He discovered through the help of powerful microscopes that a sperm and egg were composed of cells and that humans are form of cells from beginning to end. 8. Louis Pasteur he is one of the first scientists to discover the role of microorganisms in the seas and how sickness could be prevented by vaccines. 
Another German scientist named Rudolf Virchow also contributed towards the formulation of the cell theory. He completed the cell theory by providing the final postulate which states that every cell is generated from three existing cells. However, he is not credited for it. Sliden and Swan suggested that cells are the basic unit of life. These are the key postulates of cell theory. We all know that Swan and Sliden, they were both co-founders of the cell theory. They postulated that the cell is the basic structural and functional unit of life, that all living organisms are made up of one or more cells. And the book, Virko, concluded that cells were made from existing cells because existing cells divided to form new cells. Further, there are three more postulates are added to the cell theory, which form a part of the modern cell theory. One, energy flow, of course, within cells. The energy referred to this postulate is the chemical energy produced from thousands of biochemical reactions that take place inside the cell, from the breakdown of glucose to the production of ATP. All biochemical reactions produce a great deal of energy within each cell that flows from one part of the cell, one organ to another, to chemical messengers and molecules. Number two, hereditary information or DNA is passed on from one cell to another. All cells divide either asexually by mitosis, fission or budding, or sexually by meiosis. Either process results in a parent cell passing on its genetic content or DNA to the offspring of a gene. 3. All cells have the same basic composition. All cells, whether unicellular or multicellular, prokaryotic or eukaryotic, simple or complex, irrespective of size, have the same basic composition. So the mentioned postulate, along with the aspects of the modern theory, constitute the cell theory as we know it today. There's a saying goes that for every rule, there is an exception. And these are the few exceptions to the cell theory. 1. Viruses. They are considered to be non-living because they cannot replicate or reproduce despite having their genetic material. Number 2. The very first cell did not arise from a precursor cell. As we recall, the third postulate of their code. Number 3. Mitochondria and chloroplasts, all the present within cells, have their own genetic material and can reproduce independently from the cells that they are present in. From the given discussion we have today, we have seen that cells are of great importance to life. Without it, life is unsustainable. The cell theory describes the basic principles which surround and govern all cells of all living organisms, irrespective of their internal features and defenses. And this theory forms the basis and foundation of the modern cell biology of the day. How did cell theory change over time? We have here a cell theory timeline which describes those prominent scientists and their contributions from the given history of the cell that leads to the development of cell theory which form the basis and foundation of the modern cell biology of the day. If life were to be found in other planets, would you expect it to form cells? Why or why not? Among the stunning variety of worlds in our solar system, on the Earth is known to host life, but other moons and planets, according to scientists, show signs of potential habitability. Our space exploration has been continually searching for life in outer space. On the space probe sent to other planets, especially Mars, they are equipped to look after life. However, very high resolutions are still not possible on site. The question is, is it possible for humans to live on Mars? No, right now, it would be impossible for humans to live on Mars. According to scientists, currently, the surface of Mars is bathed with ionizing radiation and Martian soil, which is rich in perchlorates toxic to microorganisms. Martian soil is toxic due to relatively high concentrations of perchlorate compounds containing chlorine. The levels detected in the Martian soil are around 0.5%, which is a level cons considered toxic to humans. So, the main concept of cell theory is that cells are the basic structural unit for all organisms. 
groups of cells are small compartments that hold the biological equipment necessary to keep an organism alive and successful. And there are these smaller pieces that make up cells, such as macromolecules and organelles. A protein is an example of a macromolecule, while a mitochondrion is an example of an organelle. And the cell structure comprises individual components with specific functions essential to carry out life's processes. And what is cell organelle? It is any of the specialized structures within a cell that perform a specific function. There are two broad categories of cells. We have prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. When we say prokaryotes, those are single cell organisms. Such examples are archaea and bacteria. When we say archaea, those are groups of primitive prokaryotes that base on their distinct characteristics. While bacteria are single cell primitive organisms that form a domain of organisms diverse in shape, size, structure, and even habitat. Animal cells, plant cells, fungi, and protists are classified as eukaryotes. Eukaryotic cells are divided into major compartments, cytoplasm, and nucleus, and subsequently into individual compartments. Each of which is surrounded by a membrane and less as organelles. When you say subcellular organelles, those are specialized structures suspended in the cytosol and include nucleus, mitochondria, endoplasmic reticulum, multi apparatus, lysosomes, ferrosomes, ribosomes, and secretory vesicles. Let us discuss the cell structures and functions of plant cell under eukaryotic cell. 1. Nucleus. It is found within the nucleoplasm. With a nucleoplasm, it is the type of protoplasm that is composed of thick fluid and constitutes chromatin fibers made up of DNA and usually found in the nucleus of the eukaryotic cells. And nucleus, it is a condensed region of chromatin where ribosome synthesis occurs. 2. Nucleus. It contains the cell's DNA and directs the synthesis of ribosomes and proteins. 3. Endoplasmic reticulum. Eukaryotic cells contain several interrelated membrane-bound compartments, collectively termed as endomembrane systems or endoplasmic reticulum. And there are three morphological patterns in endoplasmic reticulum. We have the granular or rough endoplasmic reticulum, wherein it is associated with ribosomes, makes secretory and membrane proteins. Next, we have the smooth endoplasmic reticulum, which makes lipids. And we have the lamellar and vesicular endoplasmic reticulum. It is a sheet like membrane found within the chloroplast of an autotrophic cell. They act as a type of wall, which chloroplast can be fixed within, achieving the maximum life possible. There are major functions of endoplasmic reticulum. They play a vital role in the formation of the skeletal framework, increase surface area, for cellular reaction, it helps in the formation of nuclear membrane during cell nutrition and its synthesis of proteins, lipids, glycogen, and other steroids like cholesterol, progesterone, and testosterone. They are responsible for the secretion, synthesis, modification, and transportation of proteins and other carbohydrates. Next, we have five Golgi apparatus. Camilo Golgi in year 1898 had made the first report on the densely stained reticular structures near the nucleus. Hence, these were later named Golgi bodies attributed to him. They consist of many flat, disc shaped sacs or crystalline of 0.5 micrometer to 1.0 micrometer diameter. Its functions actually help in protein sorting from one compartment to another by this recovery pathway. Six mitochondria. A cell has a compartment for energy production. It obtains energy from the food supply by its environment. It is also known as the powerhouse of the cell. The mitochondria can help the living cell to convert energy supplied by the environment into ATP or adenosine triphosphate. It is the common molecule required for chemical reactions. ATP can be generated into two pathways in the cytosol and in mitochondria. First pathway exists in the cytosol of a eukaryotic cell or within a bacterial cell where glycolysis degrades glucose to lactate and releases two molecules of ATP. Second pathway is the main source of energy production as ATP. It is also called as oxidative phosphorylation and involves the electron transport chain. Next, we have ribosomes. These are the granular structures first observed under the electron microscope as dense particles were George Valley in year 1950. And when we say ribosomes, they are not considered as organelles because of the lack of the membrane around them. However, when they are producing certain proteins, they can become bound to the endoplasmic reticulum membrane. The bound and the free ribosomes are similar in structure and are involved in protein synthesis. 
the location of the ribosomes in a cell is a determining factor of the type of protein produced. If the ribosomes are free floating throughout the cell, the proteins that are used within the cell are produced. When ribosomes are attached to endoplasmic reticulum, the proteins that are used inside the cell and outside the cell are produced. 8. Ceroxisomes those are microbodies that are habitably present in mammalian liver and kidney, and also in plant cells. It depends on the type of eukaryotic cell. The matrix of peroxisomes is rich in enzymes, but a few enzymes are located in the membrane. The major functions of this are to break down the fatty acid molecules in a process called beta-oxidation, and also involved in lipid biosynthesis. Then next we have the central vacuole. It is the membrane-bound space found in the cytoplasm, and plant cells possess a well-developed vascular system, which becomes more prominent in mature cells. It is also present in the cells of animals, fungi, and bacteria, but they are smaller in size. In plant cells, the vacuoles can occupy up to 90% of the volume of the cell, and also it contains water, sap, excretory products, and other materials not useful for the cell. The vacuoles aid is in storing solids nutrients, pigments, minerals, proteins, facilitating the growth of the plant and playing a vital structural role for the plant. Also, it serves us in the other functions such as protections, storage organelles, or metabolites, growth, and disposal of toxic excretory substances. 10. Chloroplasts Chloroplasts are members of a group of plant organelles collectively known as plastids. These are associated with photosynthesis. Majority of the chloroplasts of the leaf plants are found in the mesophyll cells of the leaves. Chloroplasts function as the food producers of the cell. They are responsible for breaking down the nutrients and sugars that the cell receives and convert that into energy. It enables a plant to make adenosine triphosphate from a system in which the electrons are provided by chlorophyll that have been activated by light. Next is cytosol. Cytosol is known as the matrix of the cytoplasm. It surrounds the cell organelles in eukaryotes. Thus, we can infer that while cytosol is the fluid contained in the cell cytoplasm, cytoplasm is the entire content within the cell membrane. The cytosol of any cell is a complex solution whose properties allow the functions of life to take place. Next, cytoskeleton. It's a network of filaments and tubules that extends throughout the cell through the cytoplasm. Its structure helps cells maintain their shape and internal organization. It also provides mechanical support that enables cells to carry out essential functions like division and movement. Next, cell membrane. All plants, animal cells, prokaryotic cells, and fungal cells are bounded by a cell membrane, which is sometimes known as plasma membrane. It serves to keep all the compartment parts of the cell together in one place. It regulates the continuous movement of substances into and out of the cell. And also, it serves as a base of attachment for the side skeleton in some organisms and the cell wall in others. Thus, the cell membrane also serves to maintain its shape. Last, cell wall. It is a non-living rigid structure that forms an outer covering for the plasma membrane of fungi and plants. The cell wall provides structural and mechanical support. It also determines and maintains the shape of the plant cell and governs plant's active architecture. It resists the internal thermal pressure of cells and regulates the growth rate and the fusion of materials. It also helps a cell-to-cell -cell interaction and provides a barrier to undesirable macro molecules. Another kind of eukaryotic cell is animal cell. Despite their fundamental similarities, there are some striking differences between animal and plant cells. Plant cells have a cell wall, chloroplasts, and plastids used for storage as well as it has a large central vacuole, while animal cells have centrioles, centrosomes, and lysosomes. Based from the given features, centrioles are paired barrel shaped organelles located in the cytoplasm of animal cells near the nuclear envelope and its function is for organizing microtubules that serve as the cell's skeletal system. It helps to determine the locations of the nucleus and other organelles within the cell. Though centrioles play a role in the mitosis of animal cells, plant cells are able to reproduce without them. Next, we have lysosomes. Lysosomes are spear-shaped sacs filled with hydrolytic enzymes that have the capability to break down many types of biomolecules and they are also known as suicide valves of the cell because they contain lytic enzymes 
capable of digesting cells and unwanted material. Actually, there are three functions of lysosomes. The breakdown or digestion of macromolecules, cell membrane repairs, and responses against foreign substances such as bacteria, viruses, and other antigens. Next is vesicles. What are vesicles in animal cells? Vesicles are small structures within cells, consisting of a fluid enclosed by a lipid bilayer. Vesicles store and transport materials in the cell. Some of these materials are transported to other organelles. Other materials are secreted from the cell. Example of these vesicles includes secretory vesicles, transport vesicles, synaptic vesicles, and lysosomes. One of the examples under prokaryotic cell is bacterial cell. The cell structure is simpler than that of other organisms. As there is no nucleus or membrane-bound organelles, instead, their control center containing the genetic information is contained in a single loop of DNA. Some bacteria have an extra circle of genetic material called a plasmid. The plasmid often contains genes that give the bacterium some advantage over other bacteria. For example, it may contain a gene that makes the bacterium resistant to a certain antibiotic. What does the phylus do in the bacterial cell? Phylus often relay a floating structures that extend from the bacterial cell envelope for a distance up to 2 micrometers. They function to attach the cells to surfaces. Plasmids. Virtually all plasmids that are used to deliver DNA contain genes for antibiotic resistance. Once bacteria have been treated with a plasmid, scientists put them in the presence of antibiotic. Only those cells that contain the plasmid will survive, grow, and reproduce. The others will be killed by the antibiotic. Bacterial flagella. Those are microscopic hernic structures involved in the locomotion of a cell. The flagella have a bit like appearance that appears to propel a cell to a liquid. Special flagella are used in few organisms as sensory organs that can sense changes in temperature. Bacterial capsule. This is a large structure common to many bacteria. It is a polysaccharide layer that lies outside the cell envelope. It is a well-organized layer that is in wash off and may be the cause of virus diseases. We have here the table that summarizes the different cell organelles, its description and function. We have cell wall, plasma membrane, nucleus, nucleus, endoplasmic reticulum, graft, and smooth endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi apparatus, vesicle, lysosome, peroxisome, central vacuum, mitochondrion, chloroplast, cytoskeleton, cilia and flagella, cellules. Prokaryotic cells. Prokaryotes are unicellular organisms that lack organelles or other internal membrane bound structures. Therefore, they do not have a nucleus, but instead, generally have a single chromosome, a piece of circular, double stranded DNA located in an area of the cell called the nucleus. Most prokaryotes have a cell wall outside the plasma membrane. Like a prokaryotic cell, a eukaryotic cell has a plasma membrane, cytoplasm, ribosomes, however, unlike prokaryotic cells, eukaryotic cells have a membrane-bound nucleus, numerous membrane-bound organelles, and several rod-shaped chromosomes. Because a eukaryotic cell's nucleus is surrounded by a membrane, and it is often said to have a true nucleus. Organelles have specialized cellular roles, just as the organs of your body have specialized roles. They allow different functions to be compartmentalized in different areas of the cell. We have here the table which describes the different properties to understand the differences between prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. These properties include phylogenetic groups, nuclear structure and function, the nuclear membrane, nucleolus, DNA, cell division, sexual reproduction, implant in genes, which means those are non-coding regions of an RNA transcripts or DNA encoding it that are eliminated by splicing before transcription. Cytoplasmic structure and organization, which includes cytoplasmic membrane, internal membranes, ribosome, membranous organelles, photosynthetic pigments, respiratory system, cell walls, endopores, and gas vesicles. And in forms of motility, platinar movement, non-platinar movement, 
and the size in the younger. Why is it important to understand the differences between prokaryotes and eukaryotes? To answer this, let us watch the video about prokaryotic and eukaryotic. I will never forget a circular red spot I developed on my arm when I was in elementary school. It left a lasting memory in my mind because it was something called ringworm. And with my active imagination, I thought I was now infected with a ring-shaped worm. I learned you gotta be careful about names because ringworm isn't caused by a worm at all. It's actually a fungus, which it turns out is pretty common and can be carried by many things like pets or soil. And since up to that point I was used to antibiotics as a way to treat infections, I assumed I'd be given antibiotics. But I wasn't. I was given an antifungal cream instead and it went away. So it made me wonder, what made it different from the bacteria that had made me sick in the past? Why wasn't I given antibiotics? Well, antibiotics target bacteria. Antibiotics can destroy bacteria by affecting their ability to reproduce, damaging their cell walls, or interfering with their ability to make proteins that they need to survive. Just some examples. But it turns out bacterial cells and fungal cells are very different cell types. In fact, fungal cells have more in common with your cells, which are animal cells, than they have in common with bacterial cells. And that has a lot to do with the comparison of prokaryotic cells with eukaryotic cells, which is what we will focus on. First, just a refresher, recall that the modern cell theory includes a statement that all living things are made of one or more cells. All living things. In the three domains of life, prokaryotes are organisms that can be bacteria or archaea. They are unicellular, which means they are single-celled organisms. Eukaryotes are organisms that fit all in this last domain, eukarya. Eukaryotes can be protists, plants, animals, or fungi. They can be unicellular or they can be multicellular, which means they can be made up of many cells, like you. By the way, just to clarify, the word prokaryote is typically used to refer to the organism itself. When you are describing its cell, you are describing a prokaryotic cell. Same for eukaryote. Eukaryote typically refers to the organism itself, and when you are describing its cells, those are eukaryotic cells. Prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells do have a lot in common. Both have DNA. That's critical because DNA is the cell's genetic material. Both prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells have ribosomes, which are small organelles, an organelle being like a tiny organ. The ribosomes have the important job of making proteins. Gotta make protein. Both cells have cytoplasm, the jelly fluid within cells. Both of them have a cell membrane, also known as a plasma membrane, which is critical because it controls what goes in and out of the cell, and therefore maintaining homeostasis. All cells have a cell membrane. Now, as for cell walls, most prokaryotic cells have cell walls. Many eukaryotic cells, plant cells and fungal cells, for example, can have cell walls. But there are plenty of eukaryotic cells that don't have cell walls, such as animal cells. What makes prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells different is especially interesting. Eukaryotic cells are more complex than prokaryotic cells. They tend to be larger than most prokaryotic cells. And to help me remember some more differences in this next part, I like to remember that pro in prokaryote rhymes with no, and you in eukaryote rhymes with do. Prokaryotic cells have no nucleus to contain their DNA, so you will find their DNA is not contained within a nucleus. It's a bit messy here. They have no membrane-bound organelles. Membrane-bound organelles are fancy organelles that have their own membrane, like the nucleus, mitochondria, the endoplasmic reticulum, and the Golgi apparatus. A big indicator of eukaryotic cells is this nucleus. Eukaryotic cells do have a nucleus to contain their DNA. Depending on what type of eukaryotic cell it is, it could have different types of membrane-bound organelles. For example, a plant cell is likely to have chloroplasts, while an animal cell would not. Wow, look at all this alphabetized vocabulary. Vocabulary words you can use to compare and contrast prokaryotic cells with eukaryotic cells. 
it's important to grasp that all cells of living things fall in one of these two categories. And understanding the characteristics of these two cell types can help us better understand the diversity of living things, whether they are archaea, bacteria, protists, fungi, plants, or animals. And in the case of my example, realizing whether an infection you're dealing with involves prokaryotic cells, such as bacteria, or eukaryotic cells, such as the fungus. Activity sheet number one for individual affinity. Create a legible timeline about the foundation of cell theory based from our previous discussion, showing the chronological order of the scientists and their contributions from the given history of the cell to the development of cell theory. Be creative. Reminders, the earliest date should be on the left of the timeline and the most recent date on the right. Be sure your spacing shows a reasonable approximation of the amount of time elapsed between dates. Include pictures of the scientists on your timeline. And this is your activity sheet number one rubric for your timeline activity. And this is your activity sheet 1.2 for individual activity guide questions. Why is it important to learn about cells? How would you describe the postulates of the cell theory? How important is the development of the cell theory in the study of biology? For your group activities, you're going to challenge your knowledge and skills of cellular organelles. Activity sheet number two, group activity, you're going to construct a 3D model of a plant, animal, and bacterial cell using recyclable materials. And these are the tasks for groups. Groups 1 and 2, plant cell. Groups 3 and 4, animal cell. And group 5, bacterial cell. And each member may do the following tasks assigned by their group leaders. We have here the 3D maker, the presenter, the recorder, and the techie. And this is your final digital output product, which includes the 3D output pictures, descriptions of 3D output, guide questions and answers, pictures of participations and collaborations of members in a given group activity. And we have here the samples of 3D models of plant cell, animal cell, and bacterial cell. This is your activity sheet to rubric for your 3D output model. For your guide questions, how do you find that activity? Why are ordinals important in the structure of a cell? How does the structure of ordinals relate to their function? Why is it important to understand the differences between prokaryotes and eukaryotes? And how important are the roles of prokaryotes and eukaryotes in your daily life? And how can you help? to maintain its good stability in the environment.